Hello and welcome to the Galloper Wind Farm presentation. My name is Kieran Drew and I am the Interim Operations and Maintenance Manager at Galloper Offshore Wind Farm Project. I'm looking forward to introducing you to the wind farm and the operations and maintenance space that supports it and keeps it running 24-7, 365 days a year. I've worked on the Galloper project for three and a half years now. Prior to that, I worked for Siemens Wind Power, a company that produces, installs and maintains wind turbines. And I've also served in the British Army, working on operations in Afghanistan, serving in Iraq, Bosnia and Northern Ireland. In fact, supported by the Galloper project operator, RWE, I've been fortunate to continue to serve as an Army Reservist where I've been promoted to Major. RWE is in fact one of the world's leading energy companies and second largest offshore wind farm operators. In the UK we have 81 operational energy projects and within that we have 36 onshore wind farms and 9 offshore wind farms. This presentation today is about our offshore wind farm business and in particular our offshore wind farm Galloper and the operations and maintenance base that supports it. So what are wind farms? Wind farms are renewable energy projects that harness the power of wind to generate power. Wind turbines are not new. I'm sure many of you have seen pictures of windmills in Amsterdam, and even closer to home. We see the remnants of old working windmills dotted along the coast. In the past, windmills were predominantly built to grind grain into flour. Nowadays, our modern turbines generate energy that goes into the national grid. And that energy is what keeps the lights on or the microwave or your hair straighteners. In fact, nowadays, renewable energy provides nearly a third of the energy generated in the United Kingdom. And half of this is from wind. RWE built the first commercial scale offshore wind farm, North Hoyle in Wales in 2004. So really, the industry itself is not really much older than some of you. Today I'm going to talk to you about Galloper Offshore Wind Farm and as you can see wind turbines have come a long way in the last couple of hundred years. In fact we'll take a closer look at those turbines in a second. First of all let me tell you a bit about Galloper Wind Farm. It is a 1.5 billion pound energy project. Galloper has four investment companies who are project partners who funded the development, construction and ongoing operations of the wind farm. And it is the sister project or extension project of the Greater Gabbard Offshore Wind Farm. The wind farm is built about 27 kilometres off the Suffolk coast. The offshore part of the project includes 56 wind turbines and one offshore substation. There are two huge cables known as export cables that take the power from the wind farm offshore all the way to the onshore power station, which is based in Sizewell in Suffolk. Construction on the wind farm commenced in 2016. In 2018, all construction was completed and the wind farm became fully operational. Since then, the wind farm continues to generate enough energy for over 380,000 homes, the equivalent of powering the entire city of Coventry. And obviously, during construction of projects like this and other, others, numerous jobs are generated, of which I'll talk more later. The project location, as I mentioned, is off the coast of Suffolk, around 27 kilometres out in the upper North Sea. The turbine assembly base was in Great Yarmouth and was a, temp and was a temporary base. The port of Lowestaff was a, was a hive of activity during construction of the wind farm, as this was where all the construction team and vessels were based. And moving further down the coast, you can see Sizewell which is where our onshore substation was built, actually very close to Sizewell Nuclear Power Station, if any of you have ever seen it. And finally, the project's purpose-built operations and maintenance base, which I'll tell you more about later, is in Harwich, securing long-term skilled jobs for the area. The turbines. The turbines are a very complex piece of machinery. The design and size of offshore wind turbines has evolved massively since the first commercial scale wind farm, North Hoyle, which was built by RWE in 2004. The Galloper turbines are 6.3 megawatts, 
each, whereas North Hoyle turbines were considerably smaller and less powerful at two megawatts each. This is just one example of how technology within the industry has rapidly developed to become bigger and better. At the top of the turbines, you will find the nacelle, which effectively houses many of the mechanics of the wind farm. The turbines have a basement level for the high voltage array cables, a tower section and the nacelle, which the generator and transformer, one to generate power and the other to increase the voltage from low voltage to high voltage. Time to climb on manually is about 40 minutes. But luckily, the turbines have lifts. You just hope they don't break down. And to give you a sense of scale, the entire nacelle and blades weigh around 360 tonnes and the rotor diameter is 154 metres, approximately the size of one and a half football pitches. Here you see various aspects of, of turbines being built. The people in the photos will help give you an idea of the scale and size of the different parts of the turbines. Look at how small some of the team look in comparison to the turbine parts. And in the photo at the bottom of the slide, you can see several workers inside part of the turbine. The onshore substation, as I mentioned before, is a very important part of the wind farm. And as you'll have realized, although the wind farm is offshore, a significant amount of its infrastructure is actually onshore. And that's so that we can get the energy from the offshore into the grid onshore. To do this, we need to build a dedicated onshore substation at Sizewell. These pictures were taken between 2016 and 2017 and show Gallopus substation being built. Sizewell is a very picturesque area and an area of outstanding natural beauty. So there's a beautiful beach in the area and beach huts and residents. Therefore, our consultation and engagement with local people around the building of the onshore substation and cabling was extremely important. And we continue to have a very good relationship with the local residents to this day. The first export cable was successfully installed ahead of the programme in September 2016 off Sizewell Beach. The second export ca cable installation commenced in early May 2017. The UK company NKT manufactured the two cable export cables. Foundation installation commenced in 2016 and was successfully completed in March 2017 ahead of schedule. An unprecedented cycle time of within a week to collect and install four complete foundations was achieved so the team really did very well moving on to onto the offshore substation the offshore substation jacket and topside were fabricated in harima's hartlepool facility in uk the substation was installed within with the seaway heavy lifting oleg's strushing off heavy lift vessel Installation was in early 2017, and as you can see, the offshore substation looks quite similar to the offshore oil rig. And now the operations and maintenance base. This is a state of the art operations facility with a crew transfer pontoon and warehousing to support the ongoing operation and maintenance of the wind farm. We commenced construction in 2018 and was completed by the end of 2019. And actually, two of the main contractors were East Coast based. We were able to move our team of around 60 employees into the base around Christmas 2019. Prior to that, we had been working from static cabins, also on the port of Harwich. And now with our state-of-the-art purpose-built facility, Gallup and Siemens employees can operate and maintain the base 24-7 all the year round. Here you see the completed Galloper operations and maintenance base. It will support the wind farm for its 23 year lifespan. And many of the workforce are local and East Coast based. So the wind farm and the operations and maintenance base equate to long term skilled jobs for the local area. Over and above that, the Galloper team have over the years worked closely with the local educational institutes and learning establishments to support a number of different initiatives. From school career days, virtual wind farm tours, 
for work experience placements. In the summer of 2019, we were delighted to launch our apprenticeship scheme in partnership with the East Coast College and welcome on board our three apprentices, Eve, Rosie and Thomas. Once they've completed the four year scheme successfully, they will be qualified as engineering technicians to level three standard. Competition is tough for placements such as these with over 70 applications received for the three slots. Here is a useful graphic of the wind farm infrastructure and how it all links up. So working right to left, you have a close up image of the turbine monopile and then moving through the graphic, you can see the Siemens turbines, which are connected by array cables buried in the seabed to the offshore substation. And then the export cables in red, which there are two, which go from the offshore substation to the Galloper onshore substation. And then the onshore substation connects it to the national grid. And there you get your power. So to sum up, the technical side of things, our turbines generate the power from the wind. Cables under the seabed carry the power from the turbines to the substation. The offshore substation steps up the voltage to make it more efficient to travel. Our onshore substation connects our wind farm to the national grid. However, they don't, the story doesn't end there. Wind farms are not just about technology, they are also very important about people and communities. But it's not all about technology. At the end of the day, our industry is reliant on the communities we build and operate in. We have a role to play in developing these relationships and getting them right. From the local communities around onshore infrastructure, local political support, business engagement, local authority expertise, and the employees of the future. It's about building these networks happening right here, right now, and continuing to shape these positive relationships now and for the future. Some fantastic examples of this are the East Coast Energy Intern Internship scheme, which Galloper and James Fisher were privileged to jointly host the first ever students to take part in the internship scheme in 2016. And then in 2017, and also our work with ex Armed Forces personnel, RWE this year signed the Armed Forces Covenant, which is basically means we are proactive about supporting our serving and former Armed Forces personnel. And we employ several ex Armed Forces personnel, including myself on the project. Also, our Community Benefit Fund means we can donate a considerable amount to local good causes year on year. Each of our renewable energy projects has a community fund. For example, this year we've been working with Essex Community Foundation to support their efforts around the COVID pandemic. And we have been known to do our own fundraising activities like Gall Gallata, Galloper Sportive events or running marathons to raise money for good causes. To follow the project and what we're up to, please check our Instagram page. There are so many career opportunities in the renewable sector, and not all of them involve engineering or technician type roles, although that is the bulk of the job roles within the sector. There are other opportunities. Attributes we look for from employees working in the field include being active, fit, and disciplined, and having a head for heights and sea travel definitely helps. Have a look at the slide and see what you might need for a future career in offshore wind. Here's an example of personal protective equipment worn when offshore. As you can see, our technicians are heavily protected and have all the equipment they require to go offshore and climb the turbine and transfer from the crew transfer vessel onto the monopile. And that also allows them to work inside the turbine safely. And here's a short film about the building of the Galloper Wind Farm. Some of the project partners have changed since this was filmed, but it gives you a really good insight into the project.
And finally, to end this presentation, I'm delighted to bring you the film celebrating the construction of the Galloper Operations and Maintenance Facility. I hope you enjoy it. Galloper Offshore Wind Farm is a 353 megawatt wind farm 30 kilometres off the coast of Suffolk. The amount of green power the wind farm is expected to generate on average each year is approximately equal to the annual electricity needs of around 380,700 UK households. The wind farm became fully operational in March 2018. To support the ongoing operation and maintenance of the wind farm, a new state-of-the-art O&M facility has been purpose-built in Harwich. It represents an investment of £10 million and will support the wind farm for its predicted lifespan of 23 years. In late 2018, construction of the O&M base commenced. This included the new access road, pontoon and base itself. All were delivered on budget and on schedule. And the facility became home to around 60 full-time employees in early 2020. Galloper is run by uh, Energy. Energy is a service provider who developed and now operate. Galloper Wind Farm, the investors, the other investors, uh, apart from energy, you have Siemens Financial Services, Macquarie, Sumitomo, and ESB. Uh, and they've uh, been involved since the development stage and now uh, through to the operation stage. Yeah, so the local uh, support has been fantastic. You know, with tendering council uh, locally have supported us all the way through the development of the wind farm and now the development of this site. Uh, we've got great support from Harwich International Port through construction and now in operation. So very supportive locally and I think that will help the whole development of the industry in the, in the area. We're currently in the operational control room. The operational control room maintains and monitors the wind farm for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have some innovative features whereby the operational controller and the marine coordinator use power board to monitor and log where personnel are on the wind farm and also for incident management and general day-to-day -day control we have the electronic dispatch log. So some of my responsibilities include stock management, the import and export of spare parts and carrying out the logistics process with mobilisation of the CTVs. Well, previously we worked over three to four different sites uh, now with one building with an integrated warehouse. It saves a lot of time and uh, dramatically improves communication between departments. It's a lovely new building, it's a very modern design. It's got a pot desk set up, which is very good for a flexible working pattern. Fantastic facilities, um, all good for morale across the company. Within my job, we have the three team members and our main function is to ensure that we can get all the technicians, materials and tools out to the wind farm to carry out maintenance and repairs. Daily we have two techs who are available on energy side. We also have Siemens who will have pretty much 20 technicians going out during the summer campaigns. Definitely it's, it's time stress points um, and a lot of changes. If the turbine stops we have to rejig everything from materials to the technicians to um, the planning. With the new facilities it's made such a difference as far as the pontoon is nearby before we had to travel by car to get there. The stores was in a different location to where the office was. Uh, we're all linked in so it's easier for conversations, for planning, for quick changes. 
it's a nice building, it's nice to work in. We have little breakout areas if you want to have informal chats, canteen areas big enough for a bit more socialising, and we've got outdoor areas and where you can either have like a walk and talk meeting or just a bit of breakout time during your day. My family actually fished off this coast uh, for generations, so being able to work offshore on a skilled job and still have some heritage of what went before is, is great for me. Uh, being placed in Harwich and having the new building here means that we can uh, uh, really interact with the local supply chain. It makes it easy for us to engage with um, small engineering firms or if we need some tools quickly that we can use local tool suppliers. The, the difference coming into this building is, is night and day from where we were previously. It's a place that uh, I certainly look forward to coming to work. Um, I know I can speak on behalf of the technicians and all the back office team as well. The views we get from our windows are, are sensational. It's a, a purpose built building. It, it's certainly fit for purpose. And it, it's genuinely somewhere that you, you look forward to going about your day's business. When I first came here, we had very few local technicians for starters. We had a big recruitment drive and we recruited seven local site-based technicians with the aim to recruit a few more. We have five local apprentices, which I think is fantastic, and they'll become full-time members of our team when they come out of their apprenticeship. And of course, all the back office staff are, are local as well, so there's a big local influence in the SGRE staff here at Gallup. We have three apprentices recruited locally who are currently in their first term up at Lowestoft College. So for two days a week they do that and for the remaining two days they work with us here. They're given projects by the team that they're mentoring them and they rotate through every six months through either operations, logistics or engineering. And they'll do that for four years. At the moment we're doing two days a week at college and two days a week at the operations space in Harwich mostly just little tasks around the office at the moment but we will be going offshore soon once we've completed our training. There's a mixture of qualifications you need to get to go offshore so working at high at sea survival, fire safety, manual handling, first aid, there's like quite a few we need to get and we should be doing them in a couple of weeks which I'm very excited about. At college we've done a lot of theory based stuff at the moment, work on health and safety and making work more efficient and then a lot of practical stuff as well, basic hand tooling and working with hydraulics and pneumatics. At the end of the apprenticeship, I'll be a fully qualified offshore wind turbine technician. I'll have a level 3 qualification in technician standard engineering and by the end of it will be embedded with Siemens. I do really enjoy being an apprentice, yeah. I like just getting to know the team, like being around people that are in the industry. I think that's a really good idea about apprenticeships in general. The best part about being an apprentice is learning new skills and getting qualifications while being paid. At work it's definitely more enjoyable than I expected it to be. Everyone makes you feel very welcome and very comfortable. It's just a very friendly, welcoming environment. We, Energy, are here for the long term and Galloper Wind Farm is here for the long term, 25 years, and we will continue to manage and maintain those turbines um, through that period of time. I, I think this is a new chapter in Harridge's history. It ties in with what they do on the port, and seafaring. For the last few years they've been involved in construction of a number of wind farms from here but now this time this is their first operation and maintenance and I also think it's renewable and sustainable energy that's coming to Harwich as a business you know it's keeping the lights on in, in North Essex and South Suffolk no two ways about it. That ends the presentation. Thank you for listening.